Well, you might think that the sign of a strong relationship is that the two of you never fight. But experts say fighting is actually good and it can bring a couple closer together. Well, let's find out how that happens from Dr. Judith Wright, who's a relationship counselor. And her latest book is The Heart of the Fight, which she wrote with her husband, Dr. Bob Wright. Did you fight at all as you were doing this? a lot during <laughs> that. That's how we know that really fighting can actually make you be closer and to understand each other better. Yeah, let's talk about that because I think that's counterintuitive, isn't it? It totally is because people say, oh, we never fight or we don't want to fight. No, fighting is good. If you avoid conflict, you're avoiding intimacy. Mm -hmm. Fighting can be one of the most powerful tools to strengthen your relationship, to help you understand one another, and to really help you be more intimate. And most people are missing that, thinking fighting is bad, means there's something wrong. No, it means there's things that really need to come to the surface to be resolved and to understand one another. One of the things you talk about in the heart of the fight is the idea that um, you know, there are many things that couples do fight about. You've yes. got, you know, the yes. most common fights. What are some of those common you know, fights? One of the most common is domestic disputes, like in, in the up, up and down toilet seat or the chores, the things that everyday things, you're not doing enough, you're doing too much, you're not, you're not loading the dishwasher the way I want. Right. But those normal, everyday kinds of things are, because they're so constant, that's a big source of tension. Money, of course, mm -hmm. is you love your something more than me. You love your <laughs> iPhone more than me, sports, work, the, right. the kids, your hobbies more than me. Well, Sometimes those things that used to be so charming when you were dating yes. suddenly become irritating. Well, yeah, I can't stand the way you chew or something. Or, you know, <laughs> right. I can't stand the way you laugh or I can't stand. Because what that symbolizes, something's been building up. There's some tension building up. And the thing you found endearing all of a sudden starts to irritate you. But that's information. Okay, wait a minute. What's really going on here? Because it's not, it's not that. It's really something that's been building and it comes out. And now I'm annoyed because of how you smile or laugh or <laughs> the way you wear your clothes or whatever. Right. Okay. So what do we do when we get to that point? Well, we use rules of engagement for fighting fair because we have to fight, really. It really makes a big difference. So what one of them is to really, in, the, in your relationship, accentuate the positive. Now, I know we hear that, but that's even during a fight. Can you ask a question or be more curious or to have more fun, a little sense of humor during a fight? But then in the background of your relationship, if you've got more warmth and affection, you can weather your fights a lot better. And obviously, another one is to minimize the negative, those snarky contempt or one of the, the silent treatment, the hidden middle finger fights, the, the punishing without telling someone <laughs> why you're punishing them. Right. Those, so minimizing that. In fact, the, st the studies show that for every snarky thing we do, we need five positives to try to even that out. So most of us have to really boost that <laughs> ratio. Yeah, part of it is being a good listener too, I would think. Well, there's part of that. Really being, actually being a good expressor, that's another one, expressing the truth and agreeing with the truth. So making sure that you're telling the truth and when you're part says something that's true, acknowledge the point. Even though you don't want to give them the satisfaction sometimes, mm -hmm. it's important to say that. Yeah. How you talk, especially in a fight, yes. has got to be so important. So if you're starting a sentence with, you always, <laughs> right, uh, or, you, or never. you never, <laughs> right, yeah, right. I mean, that, that's got to be counterproductive. Yep. What are better ways to verbalize well, your concerns? Well, you know, I wouldn't worry so much about being so careful. Sometimes couples are too careful, and they're trying to not rock the boat, or they're trying to, like, manage your relationship. If you blurt out something, or you say something that's not so great. You can say, whoa, excuse me, I'm sorry. That was, <laughs> you, can, you can apologize. There's two other rules that can help. One is that you never can give or take more than 50% of the blame. You know, it takes two ah, to tango. Yeah. You know, you're in this or something we could have done that could have maybe gotten another result. Mm -hmm. And that each of you is 100% responsible for your own satisfaction and your happiness. So then that starts to shift the dynamics. So it's not so much what you say, but it's being responsible when you're out of line that you can cop to it and clean it up and try again. Yeah, some good food for thought in this book. Really appreciate you being with us today. Great, thank you. All right. You can find out more online at heartofthefight.com.